Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's a new video, a new concept. It's a pretty new concept for you. But trust me guys, once you're done understanding it, you're gonna love it. So in today's video, I'll be covering three major topics. Number one is what is a muscle spindle? Number two, how is stretch reflex elicited? And number three, a clinical correlation of nature ka stretch reflex. So I'll tell you why this is a cool concept. Number one, you know that our brain tells our muscles to move and perform certain movements, contract, etc. Right? But did you know that our muscles also tell the brain about their particular state? That is the state of the muscle, joint and the movement that is being performed at that particular moment. All this information goes to the brain and this is why our muscle spindles, the concept which I'm going to be explaining to you right now. So let's get right into the video. Or just say this is a muscle. Now the muscle has endings which are known as tendons as you know and these tendons attach to bones. So whenever a muscle contracts it pulls over the tendons and that causes the bone to move and that causes movements in our body. Right. So now this is known as an extra fusel muscle fiber. But within this there is a connective tissue sheath and within the connective tissue sheath you have other kinds of fibers. These are known as intrafusal muscle fibers. And these intrafusal muscle fibers are not necessary for the muscle to contract. But these send sensory impulses. These are basically the sensory organ of the muscle. They send sensory impulses towards the spinal cord and ultimately towards the brain to let them know the length of the muscle, which is basically the degree of stretch of the muscle and also the rate of change of the degree of stretch that is the velocity of the particular change is sent to the brain via these intrafusal fibers now this all these intrafusal fibers are together grouped and surrounded by a connective sheath capsule and that is known as muscle spindle now why is all this information very important to the brain this is important in order to maintain the tone of the muscle what is a tone? You've probably heard it a lot of times, right? So if this is my hand and some other person is passively stretching my hand, the resistance that my hand offers to that passive stretch is known as my muscle tone. It's basically the tension in the muscle, but in a resting condition. Okay, now you know something called as a muscle spindle exists. Now let us see what are the constituents of the muscle spindle. There are two kinds of fibers, right? So these are known as nuclear bag fibers and these are known as nuclear chain fibers. So the neurons in the nuclear bag fibers are all clustered and accumulated as a bag in the center and in nuclear chain they're spread out throughout the muscle spin or throughout the intrafusal muscle fiber. Now let us talk about the innovation. These muscle spindles have to do the work of sending sensory impulses and receiving impulses back but what neurons help in doing so? This is known as type 1A sensory fiber and the endings of the sensory fibers are known as primary endings or annulospiral endings. So any kind of sensory stimuli by the neurons present in the intra intrafusal fibers, the signals are taken via the type A fibers which is the primary sensory input to this. A secondary afferent which is only to the nuclear chain fibers, which is type 2 fibers. It's also secondary in nature. The second set of innovation to the intrafusal fibers is by gamma motor neurons. So as you know, they are motor in nature. So these fibers basically receive those particular neurons. Basically, this entire unit is not contractile in nature. It's only sensory, except the ends. So the ends of the intrafusal fibers have actin and myosin filaments which are contractile in nature. That is, whenever stimulated, they can contract. So, you have gamma static which is received by both the nuclear bag and nuclear chain kind of intrafusal fibers and you have gamma dynamic which is received only by the nuclear bag fibers. Gamma static helps in improving the sensory impulses of the length of the muscle fiber which is basically the degree of stretch but 
gamma dynamic not only involves the degree of stretch but also the rate of change of degree of stretch. So that's basically the velocity. I'll tell you how all of this works because right now it might seem confusing but once I tell you the entire function of how the extrafusal or intrafusal fibers coordinate, it'll be clearer to you, which is why we're going to study the stretch reflex. Yeah, sorry my duster sucks. Anyways, <laughs> the stretch reflex, right? So here is an extrafusal muscle fiber. Here are its tendons. And here is a nuclear bag intrafusal fiber and a nuclear chain intrafusal fiber within the extrafusal fibers. This is the cross section of spinal cord. Now suppose I tap on your quadriceps tendon. So quadriceps are the muscles here and they insert on your patella. And when you hit the tendon, it basically causes the stretching of the intrafusal fibers. Now let us talk about how this knee jerk slash stretch reflex is elicited. So now you've hit the quadriceps tendon. This causes a stretch or pulling of the intrafusal muscle fibers. And since you know there's so many sensory endings within the intrafusal muscle fibers that we've seen before in the form of neurons. So the sensory stimuli of stretch is taken via the type 1A and type 2 afferents. Going over it again, when you stretch the tendon, the intrafusal fibers are pulled apart, hence they are stretched. This degree of stretch and the rate of change of the stretch is taken into account by the sensory receptors within the muscle spindle and they're taken via type A and type 2 neurons into the spinal cord wherein it synapses with an alpha motor neuron. Since this is only one synapse in this entire reflex, it's a monosynaptic reflex. Now, this is an alpha motor neuron. An alpha motor neuron does not innervate the muscle spindle. It innervates the extrafusal muscle fibers, that is the actual muscle that we see, the bulk of the muscle. So when it innervates the extrafusal muscle fibers, it causes a contraction of the muscle. And this prevents the overstretching of the muscles. So let's see, we hit on the quadriceps tendon that caused the stretching of the muscle and that causes the stretching of intrafusal fibers. The sensations are taken via the type 1A and type 2 fibers to the spinal cord from where they synapse with the alpha motor neuron and go back to the extrafusal fibers. Since it was stretching, now the, the alpha motor neuron makes the extrafusal muscle fibers to contract and prevent the stretching. And this is called stretch reflex and that is why whenever you hit the knee or the tendon of the quadriceps muscle with the hammer, there is contraction of quadriceps and relaxation of the hamstring muscles behind which causes a kicking kind of motion in your knee joint. I mentioned about the relaxation of hamstrings, so let me show you another thing. So since these neurons have reached here, they send another collateral here to an inhibitory neuron. This inhibitory neuron goes to the hamstring muscles, which are on the back side of your thigh. So when they relax and the muscles on the front side, which is the quadriceps contract, you get the proper knee jerk reflex. This is fine, but we talked about gamma motor neurons, right? Where do they come into play? Now, as you see, alpha motor neurons are activated. Along with alpha motor neurons being activated, the gamma motor neurons, which go to the muscle spindle, are also co-activated. Why does this happen? So as you know, this is the muscle spindle. Its ends are contractile. So when they contract, there'll be a stretch of the middle part of the muscle spindle. When the middle part stretches, it means there is a stretch of the entire intrafusal muscle fiber and the same reflex takes place. So gamma motor neuron activation basically increases the effect of the already taking place stretch reflex by making the spindles still receptive and making them maintain the muscle tone. When gamma motor neurons are not co-activated along with alpha motor neurons, then 
the muscle spindles might become either too loose or too tight, too lax or too tight. And that might interrupt with the maintenance of the proper muscle tone or elicitation of the proper stretch reflex. Hence, it's very important that alpha and gamma motor neurons are activated at the same time. I would like you guys to pause here and think about why this happens because it's a pretty complicated concept. I'd also suggest go through Ganong if you have it for this chapter because Gaiden is pretty confusing too. Add a small thing to it. So, uh, you know corticospinal tract which basically comes from the cerebrum via the spinal cord. So, the corticospinal tract is present here. It also sends inhibitory signals to these motor neurons. So, it basically inhibits the stretch reflex. And this is more of a check than an inhibition. So, whenever there's upper motor neuron lesion, there is loss of this inhibition. And when there is inhibitory loss, then there is excessive activity of alpha motor neuron that causes hypertonicity, that is excessive tone of the muscle. There's also excessive activity of the gamma motor neuron, which causes exaggerated stretch reflexes. That is when you hit the tendon, there's a very exaggerated movement of the particular joint involved. This is how upper motor neuron lesion works. Well, that was the concept that I wanted to cover today. I really hope it helped. If it was too complicated and if you want to understand more, you can definitely DM me about it or I'll reply to you in the comments section too. So thank you so much for watching. This was my video.